Hello guys, Winston here. Today is a most excellent day, and by today, I mean like a week ago when I filmed this. I had the privilege of taking delivery of an early Shapeoko 3 unit for the purposes of beta testing the assembly instructions and providing you all with a high level overview of the build process. So without further ado, let's get started. The Shapeoko 3 comes in a 55 pound package. Upon opening it, you'll find all of your parts laid out in three layers. The first layer consists of hardware, tools, the X, Y, and Z axis carriage plates, base frame straps, end plates, and a snazzy ID plate. Layer 2 consists of your X and Y axis extrusion rails, motor controller board, power supply, spindle mount, Z axis rails, and stepper motors. At the bottom of the box, you'll find two MDF halves of your waste board. Assembly of the Shape Oko is broken down into six major steps. Step one is to set up your base frame. You'll need to lay out your frame straps, align the threaded holes with your waste board, and loosely screw the pieces together. Next, you'll add your front and back end plates, Again, align your bolt holes and screw together loosely. You'll need to align the base frame with your Shapeoko rails later. I'd recommend nudging your front and back end plates as far apart as possible to minimize the chances of scuffing up the powder coating when you drop in the rails later. Step 2 is the assembly of your Y-axis carriage plates. It's helpful if you set aside all the hardware you'll need before each step. Your nuts and bolts are all sorted into four bags of fasteners, generally by thread size. So all your M5 hardware is in one bag, for example. Since your cap screws are all mixed together, it's useful to keep a ruler or calipers nearby to double check that you're picking out the right fasteners. You'll quickly learn to identify what's what after picking out a couple screws. While we're on the subject of what's in your hardware bags, I'll mention that your V-wheels come pre-fitted with two bearings sandwiching a washer. It saves you a step that used to be part of the Shape Oko 2's assembly process. Once you've identified all the hardware you'll need for this step, we can start putting it together. Remember that a washer goes between each V-wheel and the carriage plate, and your eccentric nuts go at the bottom edge of the plate with the threaded holes oriented towards the bottom. The shoulder of your eccentric nuts may be a tight fit for the holes in the carriage plate, but you should be able to seat them properly by torquing down on the M5 screws. If not, you can either try putting the nut and plate in a clamp or using a drill or abrasive bit to remove some of the powder coating. Next, you can install the bearings that take the place of the belt idlers on the Shape Oko 2. Some of you may have regular bearings instead of the flange bearings called out in the drawings, but that's alright. I can guarantee you that a properly tensioned belt will not slip off the bearings. The GT2 pulley does a perfectly fine job of keeping your belt centered. The last thing to mount on your carriage plates should be the NEMA 23 stepper motor. Although the placement of the nut behind the mounting flange might be a little awkward, you should still be able to get enough purchase with your 8mm wrench to tighten down on it sufficiently. For every motor except the X-axis stepper, you should install your GT2 pulley with the set screw collar closer to the motor. Make sure that your pulley is aligned with the bearings. When you go to assemble your second Y-axis plate, make sure that it's a mirror image of your first one. Step 3 is to assemble your X-axis carriage plate. All of the same guidelines apply from before. Sort your hardware before you start. Add a washer between the plate and each V-wheel. Eccentric nuts for the bottom wheels. And add bearings. What's different, however, is that the X-axis plate has both the X and Z separate motors mounted on it, in addition to the custom Z-axis extrusions, more bearings on the bottom, and some extra spacers. Take time to ensure that your Z-axis extrusions are installed parallel to each other and squarely against the carriage plate. On your X stepper, your GT2 pulley will be installed in the opposite orientation as the other motors, so that your belt can be run closer to the body of the motor. Do this before mounting the motor, because there's not enough clearance to do it afterwards. Step 4 is to assemble your Z-axis carriage plate and spindle mount. Once again, we start with V-wheels, but this time your eccentric nuts will go along one side of the plate instead of on the bottom edge. Set your V-wheels to be as narrow as possible. Next, you'll have a couple standoffs to install, as well as the fixed pulley that ties the plate to the Z-axis belt. One of the spacers that forces the GT2 belt around the fixed pulley is mounted in a slot. This will be your primary method of tensioning the Z-axis belt. After bolting on the spindle mount, you're ready to put together the combined XZ assembly. Wrap your closed loop of GT2 belting around the fixed pulley, and then keep it out of the way as you slide the Z-axis carriage plate onto the rails. Make sure the GT2 belt wraps around the top pulley on the Z-stepper and the flanged bearing on the bottom. 
loosen the sand off on the Z carriage plate and drag it down to tension the belt. You'll also want to install springs between the outer standoffs on the X and Z plates. On to step 5, integrating your X and Y axis rails. Your X axis extrusion differs from the other two by a pair of holes drilled into the back for mounting the controller board. Slide your X carriage plate onto the extrusion and cap it with the Y axis plates. Keep everything loosely attached for now. Slide your two remaining rails through your Y axis plate V wheels and get ready for step 6. For the last major step, you'll be attaching your Y axis rails to the base frame. I'd recommend folding up a couple layers of cardboard as shims to support your rails at the correct height while you bolt through the front and back end plates. As with the eccentric nuts, you may want to drill or grind out the powder coated holes if you find interference. When everything's in place, you can go around making sure that your rails and your plates are squared up and tightened down on all your screws. Don't forget to adjust your eccentric nuts and V-wheels either. Once your structure is complete, you can install the GT2 belts and anchors as well as your motor control board. Your motor control board comes with a cooling fan which is 100% optional. The board is mounted in such a way that it basically uses the entire x-axis rail as a heatsink. It's more than enough thermal mass to let you run the motors at full current without active cooling, but the fan is included anyway for your peace of mind. Another big improvement that the control board brings is that you can plug your motors directly into it. Say goodbye to those awkward terminal blocks you used on the Shape Oko 2. That pretty much wraps it up for the Shape Oko 3 assembly. Keep an eye out for more Shape Oko 3 videos in the near future. If you have any questions about the setup process, I recommend starting on the Shape Oko forums. There are other members of the Shape Oko team who are better equipped to answer your questions, and the body of knowledgeable people there will grow as more and more people start getting their hands on the Shape Oko 3. I can try to answer some of your basic questions in the comments down below, but I can't guarantee a fast response. Also, there are some comments I have trouble responding to, and I suspect some weird Google Plus issue is to blame. Feel free to bug me on Twitter if I don't get back to you within a day or two. And that's all I have for today, I hope you guys found this video useful. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a week or two with some more Shape Oko 3 goodness.